Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. I hope you're all doing well, that you're all healthy and safe. Today I am going to show you how I put away flour for long-term food storage. What you see here is everything that we are going to need in order to put away our flour. Of course, with the exception of the flour, which I have set to the side. Starting on our left, you're going to see that I have a small wooden board. It has to be long enough to stretch out past the width of the size of your mylar bag. Next to that, you're going to see that I have a quart jar with some 2000 cc oxygen absorbers, which is the best size of oxygen absorber when you are storing things for long term in a five gallon container. In this case, however, when I store flour, I will be using two 2000 cc absorbers, which equal to 4000 total cc of oxygen absorber. Next to that, you'll see that I have an iron and any kind of iron will do. Under all of those items, you'll see that I have some five gallon mylar bags. And in addition to that, we're of course going to need a bucket. The reason I choose a bucket is because it creates a barrier between the mylar bag that's inside and any pests that are outside so that they can't get in. So it pretty much keeps the mylar bag and its contents secure. Now for those of you that have never done this, this is not a very complicated process at all. Anyone can do it, so don't be intimidated. It is actually very easy to do. Once you see me do this, you'll be like, wow, I've been waiting all this time to do this because it's that easy, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get started. Here you can see that I already have a Mylar bag inserted in the bucket and I have a 50 pound bag of flour that I'm going to cut open to make it a lot easier to pour the contents into the Mylar bag. Now that you're ready to transfer the product, in this case the flour, into the mylar bag, just go ahead and grab yourself something to scoop it in with. In this case, I decided to use a bowl because it grabbed more flour and it's less messy that way. And then just bring it into your mylar bag and fill it about one third of the way. Once it's about one third to one half full, I like to grab the bag and bring it up and down and shake it a little bit. And this allows the flour to settle to the bottom and compact a little. It also allows it to fill in some of the gaps towards the bottom, giving you more room. Now just finish filling your Mylar bag until you have about one inch of space from the top of the flour to the top of your bucket. This is going to give you room to be able to fold your bag and fold it down and also be able to put a lid on it without the top of the lid bulging out. Now fold your bag as if you were going to fold it in on itself and put it away. What we're doing here is, is we're getting the bag ready to put it on the floor so that we can seal it with the iron. As you can see, I'm also putting away some sugar. And the only difference between putting away sugar and flour is that for sugar, you do not need oxygen absorbers. I'm going to start off with sealing up the bucket that has the sugar in it. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, you do not need an oxygen absorber for this. What I'm doing here is I'm just writing down what it is that's inside this Mylar bag, i.e. sugar and the year and the month in which I sealed it. Now we are ready to seal it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make sure that the bag is folded so that the seams are in the right locations so that they're not overlapping or anything like that. And this bag actually has a zip lock on it. So I'm going to go ahead and seal that zip lock, ensuring that I get as much air out of it as I can. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you do sugar, you do not need an oxygen absorber. If you do put an oxygen absorber in there, it won't ruin it. It'll just turn it hard as a brick. 
And remember that if you have kitties running around the house, don't seal them in the bag. As you can see here, all I did was I put the wood under the area that I'm going to seal and now I'm just ironing it back and forth. I set my iron on hot, on as hot as it can get, and I also put a little bit of water in it. It doesn't hurt, and it helps to keep you from burning through the mylar bag in case you leave it in one spot for too long. As you can see here, that there is perfect seal, and now we are ready to do our flower. Before I start to seal the flower, I am getting a wet paper towel and I am cleaning off the inside of that mylar bag around the areas that I am going to seal it. I am going to come back here in a second and wipe off any excess moisture with a towel to make sure that it's dry. Now the reason I'm doing this is because there's probably, if you do this, there are going to be some small bits of flour in that area. And if you leave that flower there, it may impede the sealing process and it may not give you a good seal. So always make sure that the area that you're going to seal of that Mylar bag is nice and clean before you start sealing it. Now I'm going to get out my oxygen absorbers. Now in this case, ladies and gentlemen, when I do flour, I always use twice as many oxygen absorbers as I need. The reason being is that flour, since it's such a small particle, it has a lot more surface area, meaning that it will invite more oxygen to oxidize the flour than any other grains, which have a much smaller surface area, meaning that they are bigger and there's not that much oxygen that can get into that specific grain. Flour is different because it's so small, it has a much larger surface area. I hope that makes sense. Now all we have to do is do the exact same thing that we did with the sugar when we sealed it. However, in this instance, we have to act a little bit faster because our oxygen absorbers are out and they're not sealed. And we don't want them to use up any of their oxygen absorbing strength just taking oxygen out of the air that's outside. So as you can see here, I sealed it as best as I could. I took out as much air as I could. Some people go ahead and put a vacuum in there and take out air with a vacuum. You don't need to do that in this case. And I'm going to show you how well of a job these oxygen absorbers do once you've let it sit for about a day or so before you put it away in your long-term storage area. Now, this is as hard as this gets, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very simple process. Anybody can do this, and you can put away your own long-term food storage by doing the same thing that I do here. Some people have asked me in the past, how long will it last? Well, to tell you, I've used flour in the past that I've just stored in my pantry without an oxygen absorber that was over five years old. And it was still good, absolutely nothing wrong with it. So I am personally convinced that doing it this way will extend the life of your flour for much longer than five years. Now remember that I put my things in an area when I store them that is very cool, anywhere between 50 to 60 degrees, no higher than 60, and there's no sunlight, and it is not free of rodents, but the rodents can't get into the bucket because it's a bucket, and I don't have rats where I live either. They can actually chew through this type of plastic. Now, this bag that I'm doing here is my second bag of flour. And as you can see, I didn't fill it up to the top because I didn't have enough to fill the rest of it. But I still wanted to put this away for long-term storage. In this bag, I only used one oxygen absorber because it's only about half full than the other one was. And that should be just fine. So what I'm going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and show you what this looks like once it's done and it's set for a day so that you can see how the oxygen absorbers work. It's the morning after I seal these up and put them in their bags, ladies and gentlemen. And I just wanted to show you how good of a job the oxygen absorbers do in taking all the oxygen out of the container. As you can see, that mylar bag is sucked in enough to where it keeps the shape of the bucket. So that tells me that Number one, the oxygen absorbers work and the bag is properly sealed. 
that's going to be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you got something out of this. It took me probably about, I would say, 45 minutes to get all of this done. And I mean from getting the buckets set up to getting the bags in them to getting all of my supplies that I was going to need and actually doing it. But those 45 minutes were very well spent because now all I have to do is put a lid on these, put them away in my long-term storage location, and they'll be ready for me to use whenever I need to use them. This is not something that I dip into very regularly, if ever. Usually whenever I put something away for long-term storage, it's exactly for that, for if I ever need it because I know that I will have it. So I really don't rotate these very much. Some people may say that putting stuff away in five gallon buckets is too much for you to use at one time when you open it back up. But you have to consider this. Look at the five gallon bucket of flour that I put up that was completely full. That's roughly 30 pounds of flour. If you bake one loaf of bread a day, you're going to use up that five gallon bucket, i.e. that 30 pounds of flour in roughly one month. Okay, so it's really not as much as it looks when you take into consideration that if you dip into these buckets because you have to, it's because more than likely you're going to be using that product on a daily basis until you've exhausted the contents inside of the bucket. Same thing with the sugar. You may not go through 30 or 35 pounds of sugar in a month, but once you open that sugar up, you really don't have to seal it back up and it'll stay good for well over a year if not longer as long as the conditions in which they are stored are dry and not very humid and of course free of rodents all right ladies and gentlemen like i said i hope you got something out of this i hope you guys are having a good day uh, be safe out there and take care of yourselves ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for joining me today remember to be good to each other when good people do good things good things happen remember to reach one teach one and repeat if we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper, and I am out.